With the approach of Christmas Eve, young children eagerly await the arrival of St. Nicholas, dreaming of the fat man soaring across the land on a sleigh pulled by magical flying reindeer. He stops at the houses of good little boys and girls sliding down their chimneys to leave Christmas presents under the trees of those who have been good. It's a magical time of year. The question is, is any of that legal? What laws does Santa Claus break? Breaking and entering are trespassing. Every year, Santa Claus enters into millions of households in the U.S. alone. Whether he has lawful permission to enter these residences is iffy. While his intentions may be pure, the law does not grant exceptions for well-meaning lawbreakers. This may serve as a mitigating factor, getting Santa a lighter sentence through a plea deal, but it doesn't mean Santa would be immune from prosecution. There are a couple types of charges related to the unlawful entry into private property. Burglary, commonly referred to as breaking and entering, typically requires the offending party to enter the building or structure with the intent of committing a crime. Seeing as Santa's objective in breaking into your house is to fill stockings, put presents under the trees, and generally spread holiday cheer, I think Santa's actions would be closer to a criminal trespassing charge. Trespassing laws differ from state to state, but are generally defined as an unwanted or unauthorized entry into someone's property. In most states, trespassing is a low-level misdemeanor or infraction, but in a couple states, it can get you a felony charge. While I don't think a child would call the police on Kris Kringle, a parent who doesn't believe in Santa Claus and mistakes the jolly fat man as a common burglar might. Additionally, someone upset at the prospect of receiving coal in their stocking might maliciously call the police on Santa Claus. A felony charge of burglary can get you up to 40 years in prison in some states, while a misdemeanor trespassing charge could get you a year or less, and in many cases, simply probation. If I were Santa Claus's defense attorney, I would argue that my client had been legally invited into the household by a resident. I would ask that Santa Claus produce the letters he received from children and present them to the court as evidence of his right to enter and remain on the premises on that night of December 24th, the morning of December 25th. Stopping, invasion of privacy, wiretapping. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He's making a list and checking it twice, gonna find out who's naughty or nice. These popular song lyrics could lead to stalking and invasion of privacy charges against St. Nick. And if this cyber surveillance was conducted using some type of electronic device, the charges could be upgraded to wiretapping. If I were Mr. Kringle's attorney on charges like these, I would file a motion to exclude the evidence recited in the song as hearsay. I would argue that the lyrics of the song Santa Claus is Coming to Town amount to rumors and innuendo and not a first-hand account of any client's activity and therefore aren't admissible in court. Once the motion to exclude was granted, which I'm confident it would be, I'd file a motion for dismissal based on lack of evidence. Unless the prosecution can produce an eyewitness or some form of tangible evidence that my client, Chris Kringle, is watching children that are asleep in their private homes, the court will dismiss the case for no corpus delecti of the crime. Illegal Immigration Santa Claus may very well be considered an illegal immigrant, especially under the current administration. That means if arrested by the Immigration and Customs Enforcement agents, Santa Claus could find himself detained in an ICE detention facility. But that is where it would get complicated. While some might argue Santa has Greek or Dutch citizenship, based on historical accounts, assuming he has resided at the North Pole for the entirety of his existence, it is probable that Santa Claus is a stateless person. In technical terms, he's not considered as a national of any state under the operation of its law. This presents a big problem for Santa. Stateless persons who face deportation can end up being held in detention center indefinitely. Personally, I think there'd be some very upset children if they didn't get Christmas presents because Santa was indefinitely detained in an ICE detention facility. If I were representing Mr. Claus and he found himself in this predicament, I would reach out to friendly countries who'd be willing to grant him citizenship. The Laplanders seem very fond of him, so I might reach out to Finland first. Aviation, flight, and pilot laws. There are a plethora of laws surrounding when and where and how you can fly a manned aircraft. In this case, a sleigh. While many of them would normally outlaw Santa's midnight mission, since at least 2010, the Federal Aviation Administration have put out an annual announcement that they're clearing Santa for takeoff. According to the official release from the FAA, Santa has been cooperating with the agency to get approval for his flight, duty, and rest plan, as well as ensure that he is in compliance with a number of other regulations. The FAA even stated that Santa had had appropriate chimney approach charts. 
violation of protected airspace. I'm not sure if Santa has received a special pass to travel through protected airspace, but if not, I would advise him to be wary of those spaces. If he were deemed a national security threat for, say, trying to deliver Christmas presents to the White House, he would first have to evade F-16 fighter jets only to face charges of violating 49 U.S. Code 46307, violation of the national defense airspace. Surprisingly, this is only a misdemeanor, which carries a term of no longer than a year in prison. I would hope that since the FAA has cleared Santa's flight plan and are partially responsible for monitoring the NORAD radar system, that they would have his back on this. But if not, Santa's best bet on beating these charges would be not to get caught. Because of the relative small size of his craft, many radar systems may have trouble picking him up on radar. And if I know Santa, like I think I do, he has a lot of experience leaving the scene of the crime flying out of sight like the down of a thistle. Flying while intoxicated. Santa receives milk and cookies from millions of homes each year. But not everyone leaves him that classic combination of Christmas staples. Santa should be especially careful of brownies from Colorado this year. Flying while intoxicated laws are similar to DUI laws, and they can typically get you a misdemeanor for your first offense. Illegally imported wildlife. Santa's reindeer are subject to countless Christmas songs and stories. They are also subject to strict regulatory laws that differ from state to state. These regulations include receiving veterinary inspections for brucleosis, tuberculosis, chronic wasting disease, as well as obtaining a proper licensing from the U.S. Department of Agriculture under the Federal Animal Welfare Act, 17 U.S.C. 2131 through 2156. If Santa were found not to be in compliance with these laws, he could face up to a year in prison and a $2,500 fine for each violation of the Federal Animal Welfare Act and similar punishment in each state in which he was found to be in violation. Bonding Santa out of jail. A bigger issue for Santa Claus might be that if arrested for any of these crimes, a prosecutor could argue to a judge to give him an exceedingly high bail. After all, Santa is a pretty big flight risk. Santa does not live anywhere close to any jurisdiction he would be arrested in and has the means to possibly escape to the North Pole via flying sled were he released on bond. There are also many bondsmen who would be skeptical of bonding out Santa because of their inability to track him down were he to jump bond. The North Pole is technically located in international waters. This means the U.S. Code will allow the federal government to exercise what is known as special maritime and territorial jurisdiction, allowing them to send agents to bring him into custody based on several factors, including that his victims were U.S. citizens and that his crimes occurred on U.S. soil. Personally, I think they might have to send Krampus to go get him. I don't think the federal government is capable of catching Santa any other way, but that's just me. Either way, I'd be happy to represent Santa and attempt to clear him of all charges were he to be arrested for engaging in his mission to spread joy and Christmas cheer to the world. I'm sure there are more laws that Santa Claus's whole operation violates in his quest to bring magic to the world, but this is a good start. If you have laws you believe St. Nick breaks, let us know in the comments. If you enjoy the, the video, make sure you like Citizens for Justice on Facebook and subscribe to them on YouTube. Until next time, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from the Wise Law Firm in Columbia, Missouri.